are you working towards a carbon neutral or maybe a more energy efficient campus as well? I think you've mentioned all of it, but yeah. We are actually uh, aiming to be a zero carbon footprint, footprint campus by 2030. And we, ne we don't have any vehicles around the campus. It's a food campus. Mm. Because the buildings are smart buildings, they're green buildings. And we have extreme level of ventilation. We have solar, we do vermi composting, so there's no food that goes waste. We recycle water from the hostels and we use it back into the farms. And uh, I think, uh, you know, a great role has been played by... You see students building more of a career in the sustainability space, moving towards that space more now. Um, sustainability is ingrained in all the subjects. And uh, uh, while we are very, very sensitive about uh, say whether it's animal husbandry or forestry or mm. agri-tech or, or law or all of these subjects. We ensure that uh, the students who move out, who are alumni, at least... Um, what's one student-led project that truly impressed you? And I know this is not you having to pick or be biased, but generally something that impressed you or touched your heart. Um, so we have several projects that the I'm students sure. have done, but uh, I think somewhere uh, a few projects that stand apart are, uh, you know, where we introduced uh, drone technology mm. um, and we introduced uh, this with the entire 800,000 farmers that we work with and uh, uh, we have a, also a, a center where you know the girls who pass out of the university they mentor seven other girls who are in their uh, graduation so what happens essentially is there is there is peer mentoring mm. happening uh, in a very very effective way so uh, what they essentially do is they get, give their connections, they build these ecosystems and one such instance that I can remember and which stands out basically is the fact that uh, we have now impacted about 800 families around us and I would say 8 villages that are now model villages when it comes to smart farming and when it comes to uh, zero pesticide farming. Wonderful. Uh, we are like a collaborative community uh, oriented system where together we ensure that there are buyback arrangements, we grow together and we ensure the soil rests for three months a year like uh, you know like the other uh, countries that who follow but in India what happens is the farmers are all marginal mm. so they grow throughout the year, they want to sell throughout the year right. but we ensure they earn as much such that with, with zero spray, such that they rest their farms for three months, which helps the soil regenerate, which helps the soil retain its moisture, its ingredients, and that gives you the right uh, nutritious food that you need. So I think in essence, we are growing the right type of nutritious food okay. with zero sprays. That also adds value to the income of the farmers. There's also a huge issue that I've heard globally People uh, especially hate agriculture, the parents, you know, it's not glamorous, <laughs> agriculture and agri-tech. Yeah. But uh, what happens is um, now there is more interest because when you see business in it, there is more interest in it. And we're seeing that the marginal families have, have good money coming in because we're giving them platforms, mm. ethical farming methods, smart farming methods, and also good business in farming. So we've done a lot of work, but a lot of tech has gone into it. So it's all interdisciplinary. It's never just one department doing the job. No, and it's that's all truly us. commendable. So do you think now that you've created that awareness, um, better opportunities for work, do you see students building more of a career in the sustainability space, moving towards that space more now? Um, sustainability is ingrained in all the subjects. And uh, uh, while we are very, very sensitive about uh, say whether it's animal husbandry or forestry or mm. agri-tech or, or law or all of these subjects we ensure that uh, 
the students who move out who are alumni, at least 60% uh, of my alumni take a bond ownership because um, that is something uh, we've been pushing at the university. Uh, we want more and more entrepreneurs out there and uh, who not only understand sustainability for the as a subject, as uh, you know, as an immediate urgent need, but also look at sustainability as a business. Mm. How do you create and measure impact and also earn right. from your practices? Yeah. Uh, the general tendency is to say, oh, you're going uh, non-GMO, you know, there's a problem with this, you know, you don't, you're going like this, you know, that, that, that will not be sustainable as a business. So you need to have an all-rounded approach where you say, okay, here is your product. Mm. Uh, here is the method, the methodology that you need to follow. Here is the proof of concept. That's your pilot and now we commercialize it. And this is wonderful because in the previous podcast, we also spoke about how startups, entrepreneurs have a little bit of an edge compared to bigger companies with making that change towards sustainability, right? And you've created that platform for all of them to have the foundation to start with that. And we also spoke about how it's almost going to, not almost, it will in the near future become mandatory for all companies to adopt these sustainable practices, for startups to involve sustainability practices, and it's not going to be an option. So the fact that you're creating that foundation for students and startups, you know, or for students to be able to be entrepreneurs and startups that already follow um, sustainable practices, I think it's, it's truly wonderful. Um, do you think AI or data science has also played a big role in solving environmental challenges? Um, yes, of course, because all of these agri technology, technology has cut across all sectors, whether it's agriculture or security, political science, politics, sustainable cities, smart cities. So there is no sector where technology doesn't, uh, uh, it's, it's a great disruptor, right? So agri tech is one of the very important aspects mm. that uh, we, we, we steer and uh, drones. Uh, are AI based, the smart intelligent control systems within the protected uh, environment that we grow plants. It's called the protected cultivation. Uh, we have these poly houses, mm. glass houses, where we have delicate plants growing and where temperature is controlled, everything is monitored and it's, it's, it's laborless. So we're looking at smart intelligent control systems uh, within the polyhouses to grow fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, we also measure the level of infestation, the measure the level of water that is going towards the plants because water management is a very important aspect of whatever we do at that, uh, you know, that area is very arid. And uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, a, a country like UAE, you know, the, the UAE is a, is a great experiment for us if we have to look at it because we talk sustainability, we talk about uh, desertification, we, we talk about natural resource recovery mechanisms. Mm -hmm. I think it all fits in here. We talk about water management, we talk about growing fresh fruits and vegetables in stressful environments. And that's what we do and we practice there. And I think uh, uh, a lot of it uh, contributes to technology. It's a great disruptor and without technology, I think, it is extremely difficult and that's what we are doing there, you know, we, we are training farmers for yeah. drones, for not only for imaging, but also for spraying and for also uh, understanding uh, a lot of aspects when it comes to the water management. No, great. Uh, such beautiful, sustainable initiatives that you're taking care of on your campus. Um, but also, are you working towards a carbon neutral or maybe a more energy efficient campus as well. I think you've mentioned all of it, but yeah. Yeah, we have, as I said, we have solar, we have uh, drip irrigation systems, we have, uh, we are actually uh, aiming to be a zero carbon footprint, footprint campus by 2030. And we, ne we don't have any vehicles around the campus. It's a food campus. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides that, we, we also have no air cons. The buildings are Very all green buildings, and these green buildings. When you, when you, when you, uh, when a student is inside a classroom and when he's doing his classes, 
there are smart boards and other aspects but there are no aircons and no one has ever felt heat there because the buildings are smart buildings are green buildings and we have extreme level of ventilation and natural breeze keep flowing in and out so um every uh, in essence everything at the campus is sustainable we don't use plastic obviously mm. and as i said we are a food campus we don't use vehicles uh we we have solar we do vermi composting so there is no food that goes waste we recycle water from the hostels and we use it back into the farms and uh, i think uh, you know a great role has been played by my co-founder mr bharat lal meena mm. uh who comes from a background of farming and i think every bit of sustainable initiative that i see in the campus is commendable because he is an initiator of that he drives mm-hmm. it so you need someone to drive it like that also absolutely because uh, it just doesn't happen overnight i think it has to be it has to be uh, uh, introduced as a culture and uh, building culture is the most difficult part right no and i think uh, it also starts with building a community of people that like you said like the support the co-founder people who believe in the same initiative because i feel like every one person who thinks or does not know better you can make a small difference so little initiatives coming together trying and creating awareness doing small activities small initiatives all of these add up um and you creating the education and awareness is definitely going to help people you know understand sustainability and understand the importance the urgency and the need for it yeah so we we basically follow uh we believe that you know we are co-creating leadership is about co-creating global impact and you can't think of one year or two year ha- you have to think a decade so we are co-creating global impact and we're looking at a decade here mm. and when you are co-creating global impact you cannot really look only global you need to have a global fo- focus global is having a global mindset yeah. but catering to the local needs so this is how i think uh it works so this is our vision and it just uh, it's a culture that we are building at the university and uh, not only just the university communities that surround us where we have a proper impact measure mm. for what we've done and uh, uh, everything uh, that cannot be measured as an impact and cannot be monetized we don't believe that adds any value So you know absolutely and I think this is something that my dad's always said and might have mentioned in the previous podcast is also that think local act global if I'm saying yes. it right think long term a uh, not short term that's how you're going to work towards sustainability um but what makes you most optimistic about India's youth in the role of climate action as i said demogra- demographic dividend and the age group etc and in indian youth uh, somewhere they have to be channelized mm. unless they are steered unless they have awareness it is going to be very difficult to position ourselves in the global map as vishwa gurus that we are aiming to be we can't uh, call ourselves and self proclaim ourselves as vishwa guru there's a very interesting book i read recently by dr ram mathur when it's called the new world order mm. i would like the audience to probably grab a copy of it because it speaks about uh, 10 different ways in which we can look at the new world and and 10 different ways in which india can position itself in the new world so somewhere the youth have to play a very important role most of our country is an average of 28 to 35 and unless we channelize this strength mm. of our youth dividend and give them opportunities build platforms for them uh, unless it is channelized it is going to be a liability but i'm very optimistic that uh, universities are now uh, experimenting and uh, most universities it all starts from the universities it all starts from the education so school education and higher education are playing a very important role in channelizing this energy of youth dividend and i'm quite optimistic that yes we'll reach our goal of being a vishwa guru very soon that's so wonderful because you know we've spoken on the previous podcast again about how my dad primarily and i think i'm starting to agree that the youth truly has the power to make change so involving them in it um educating them in it creating the awareness for them to take the way forward is the best way forward i yeah. think 
Um, and if you could change one thing in India's higher education system that so as to support sustainability, what would it be? Mm, add a subject uh, because <laughs> India unfortunately goes by credits and yeah. credit system. Mm. Uh, we take too much pride in our degrees. So if I'm a PhD, I'm supposed to be the most proudest because I've given half of my life studying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, the bachelor's, master's, PhD tag and postdoctoral tag comes very important, becomes very important to us uh, back in India. We're very serious people and we take education very seriously. So introducing sustainability credits in the curriculum right mm. through the school to the higher education yeah. will actually have a huge impact and will make it mandatory yeah. for a student to understand and learn sustainability and sustainable development. Of course. Yeah. And finally, um, mm -hmm. what's one message you'd like to leave for students who are listening and for those who want to build a greener future? The one message is I think uh, you have all the opportunities and know-how, the knowledge through internet, through Instagram. You can volunteer for so many more activities. You can run campaigns. You can be aware and you can contribute. So, uh, so be out there and be a sustainability champion. And uh, I think uh, build your own clubs. We have clubs at the university, which uh, not only for our university yeah. students, but for students from all across. So uh, build your own clubs, have your own campaigns, do your own volunteering, and try and give at least uh, 500 hours of volunteering every year uh, so that you know uh, uh, what's rural India mm. so that you know the real India and so that you understand your culture and your mm. heritage wonderful um, thank you so much for joining us Ms. Rupa for sharing such grounded future facing you know insights whether it's classrooms from classrooms to climate solutions um, this podcast truly, truly is honored to have you. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you very much.